Hi there, welcome back. It's uh, been quite a while since the last restoration, so I'm looking forward to this one. This one is a uh, TKD, TKD tube radio, which uh, I must confess, it's a brand that I've never, it's a make I've never seen before. This is the first time. The TKD, and when I show you the back, you'll see the logo. The TKD brand is actually uh, something I've seen on old valves, but not the radios. But again, this one is, uh, it's a German set. It's from around 1957. We might get some more information when I show you the schematic that I believe is glued to the bottom panel, which is great. Just as well, because um, I can't find a schematic for this one. It's got a phono. This is the off switch on and off. On is when you put one of the channels on and then off. It's got a phono input, which is very important because uh, I do want to put a Bluetooth receiver on this thing. Medium wave, and then it's got four shortwave bands. Shortwave 4, 3, 2, and 1. There is no FM. This thing is... Quite honestly, I don't know what the function is. It'll be the volume control. I presume the back would be the tone, perhaps. Here we've got one single knob which controls the tuning. So it's very simple. It's got a magic eye. Quite uh, reminiscent of the Gretz brand, if I'm not mistaken. The shape of that, uh, of the window. Now, it's seen better days, actually. If you if you look at some of the, the cord here, <laughs> it's been added to it's got an old plug so this will probably have to go but other than that in terms of uh, aesthetics it's not in bad shape it needs a proper cleanup but it's not in bad shape let me uh, give you a closer look as you can see the woodwork is is fine actually it needs some cleaning and polishing but um, nothing too serious there's no brass visible on the knobs i think the front is actually brass should be then you've got your piano keys, which are all fine, and they seem to be working. The uh, faceplate is perfect, nothing wrong with that. It's very simple, as you can see, but in perfect condition. The dial indicator is working, so the cord is in place. This is a brass ring around here, which is completely gone in terms of uh, color so that should be something that will stick out nicely when we've cleaned it polished it but there is uh, nothing serious on the woodwork there's uh, the, the grill cloth is pretty much immaculate which is great a lot of uh, tarnishing on there which should polish up nicely the sides a few dings nothing serious nothing that a bit of polishing won't uh, sort out not much damage at all to the uh, to the cabinet. The back is also pretty much perfect condition. And we've got the tube line up here. So we've got an AZ41 EF41. It's got an EM34 Magic Eye. ECH42, there'll be the mixer oscillator. EF41, probably the uh, IF amplification. EBC41, probably detector and preamp, and then the EL41, which is uh, the power amp in this case. The AZ41, I believe, is the, is the uh, tube rectifier. There's an output down here for a 5 ohm speaker if you want it. There's the gramophone input, which is important for us for the Bluetooth. The make is TKD, TKD. W367K. Now, I couldn't find uh, schematics for this one. I think the one I did find is a W681 or 668 or something like that, which uses uh, an EL84 output tube. So it's a little bit later than that. So, But it should be fine. It shouldn't be too difficult if we've got the schematic. And I think, I believe it's got the schematic on the bottom. There's your antenna and ground connection your uh, input voltage, your uh, supply voltage selector. Now let's open it up and see what's uh, what's inside. It's uh, actually a fairly small set. 
you've got your tubes, um, you've got your uh, IF transformers here, very clean speaker over there, not particularly large but enough to do the job, a lot of dust, few um, insects lying around to be expected. I don't see any rust on this thing, I don't see any uh, woodworm damage on this thing which is usual for radios of Madeira actually which is the one complaint I have about our climate. It does seem to be very, very kind to uh, woodworm. And usually when I get these radios, these things are practically hollow because the woodworms got rid of all the wood. And I've seen, you've seen a couple of those cases in uh, previous restorations I've done. But this thing looks quite neat. Let's have a look. There's our transformer. We've got all the required voltages. There's even a 240 volt selection, which is great. The fuses. Uh, we don't know if those are blown or not. That's the uh, rectifier tube, the AZ41. That there would be, I presume, the mixer oscillator, is it? We'll find out soon enough. Tuning condenser. The dial cords seem to be intact, which is great. Magic eye up there. You see a, a bit of dirt and so on, but not really rust. It's more tarnishing. Output transformer, fairly small, but in neat uh, condition. Filter cap, output tube, oh, a bit stained over there. We'll see what that means. But otherwise, the chassis itself is just uh, needing some really serious polishing, but uh, not so much rust removal. So let me take the bottom off and see what's inside the bottom end. Well, it's a little grubby, but um, it seems to be here. Everything is here. I'm going to clean that up without messing up the schematic. This is important. This is really important because with these uh, AM sets, it's got uh, medium wave and four shortwave sets. This whole setup here becomes and that there becomes very important to be able to check because that's where your coils are to set the different bands and if you don't have that it can be a real pain in the butt because measuring these things is a bit of a problem so one of the things I'm going to do is obviously copy this and, and print it out so I can work on it and uh, maintain this thing intact I'm trying to see a date on here and I don't maybe it's staring me in the face but I don't the other thing I don't see is the IF frequency, but that shouldn't be too difficult to sort out. Uh, usually they're around 460 kilohertz, 455, 460, some 458, but either way it shouldn't be a problem to find it because we'll just put a signal through and see which one resonates and I'll get to that near the end. Now let's have a look inside. Well, here we go. Quite a few capacitors to change on here. All those caps are probably going to have to go. The usual recapping. Not those polystyrene ones. Those red ones very, very seldom have a problem. These coils usually just need cleaning. And I'm glad to see that all the caps on here are the polystyrenes. That Eero sometimes goes bad few more in here. We'll take this out later and have a closer look at it, but there are a few caps, quite a, a few of the caps here need changing. Some of them are probably going to be fine. So this thing needs a recapping. It needs a uh, an alignment probably, or adjustment of alignment, and a hell of a lot of cleaning, as usual. I've said this before, I'll say it again. This hobby is 90% cleaning. If you don't like cleaning, choose another hobby. Anyway, let me get this thing out of the chassis and uh, put it on the on the uh, stand so that we can get started. I'm certainly not switching this thing on just yet because I want to make sure that we have nothing dramatic going on here. Check the transformers, etc., etc., as I usually do. But um, first things first, get this thing out of the cabinet. Okay, so we've made some progress. 
I've uh, taken this out of the cabinet, put it on these stands, test fixture as one of my subscribers suggests. It makes it very very easy to handle the radio. You can actually flip it around any way you like and you're not going to damage anything. Now as per usual before turning this on I have a series of tests that I do. The first one is a simple test to make sure that the power transformer is working without actually giving it mains power. And to do that I've um, I could go through the whole thing here but it's easier just to use one of the videos that I've done before. I've got some uh, small videos with various uh, techniques that I use and I'll link it above. It's testing the mains transformer. So that turned out to be okay. The second test I do is on the output transformer because if that's gone you've got a serious problem. Usually you can yeah, you can probably replace the mains transformer. I've done it before. The output transformer is a bummer. Um, these things are sometimes a bit specific. This one is definitely specific to the uh, output tube they use which is the EL41. I don't believe I have a transformer lying around that would uh, work properly with that without going into all the specs and so on. Again, I've got a small video in the building block series that I'll link above. You can see how I test for this thing. And that turned out to be fine as well. The next stage was testing, just basically checking the input uh, power circuit, making sure that um, there are no crazy shorts or anything like that and it all turned out to be quite okay. So what I decided to do on this one, because it is quite a simple set and um, well, let me get right to it. I'm going to power it on. Before that though, I'm going to replace the coupling cap to the output tube. Now this is the capacitor that can actually mess up your bias on your output tube and cause some pretty major current draw which could cause sparks and can blow out your uh, your upper transformer. I'll show you that on the schematic. This is the capacitor in question here. C43, it's a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Now what this does is it couples the audio output from your preamp tube from the anode of your preamp tube to the uh, first grid of your output tube and it comes over there, across there, down there. It goes into that, through that capacitor. It then goes through a 10k resistor with a, what is it, 800k grid leak to ground. And then it goes into the first grid of the, of the output tube, which is actually the input of the output tube. Now, if that thing is allowing DC to leak through from there, that's, it says the 108 volts. If that thing was going to leak through, then this thing could actually run away with itself because this thing is, needs a negative voltage on the grid relative to its cathode. Um, and if you, the more negative it is, the less current it'll draw. If you make it positive, it just basically opens it up like a bloody tap. And your current goes surging through there, pulling, pulls through the power transformer and you can blow your power transformer. So I'm going to replace that first and then probably I think I'll do a power up just to see what we get from this thing. And that little cap there is the one in question which I've now replaced. I took out the old one. I haven't tested it for leakage yet. I just want to get something going on here. This is the one that I removed from there. Looks pretty grotty. It could actually be working for all I know but I put it in there, 10 nanofarad, 630 volts, and it should be safe enough to turn it on with great care. And what exactly does that mean? Well, let me show you. I have plugged it in to the uh, dim bulb limiter. And um, if you're not aware, this is uh, going to limit the current because it puts one of these lamps in series with the load. I'm going to start with a 40 watt lamp in, in series, that's that one over there, the others are off. I can then reduce the limitation by putting more lamps in series, in basically parallel series. Uh, so to start off we're going to have a 40 watt lamp, I can put that on there, we'll have, we'll have a 100 watt lamp, it'll allow more current through. But to start off I'm putting it on maximum restriction, the limit is on 
It's uh, going through the isolation transformer. It's off there at the moment. The push button switches on the radio are off. And when I switch it on, we should see that lamp glow brightly for a while. That's when it charges the capacitors. Then go down and then as the current, if it works, as the current starts getting drawn, it'll glow brighter again. But uh, one thing at a time. I've also connected the speaker, though I'd cut these wires to remove this from the cabinet, I've got this on a little connector and that's connected to an external speaker. So if we hear something, we'll hear it through there. I've also got the, the multimeter connected to the first B+. Plus. That's where it comes into the output transformer. See what uh, B+, plus we're getting. Oh, it's a bit dim, but I'll tell you what we're getting there. I've got the external antenna connected at the back. That's what you call wishful thinking, but hey, why not? Let's switch this on here. And then I'm going to select volume is on max. Medium wave, let's give it a shot. That lamp should glow. Let's, it should glow to start off with. Let's see. Huh. It's not much, is it? Switches on, switching on. Bloody hell. Oh, there we go. Okay, the only switch that worked was the shortwave switch. Wonder why? These just didn't do anything. Well, now it stayed in. Now it's on medium wave. The uh, panel lights are Panel lamps are on. I've got 227 volts here dropping as the output tube starts drawing current. As the tube starts drawing current, the B plus drops and it's actually dropping quite a lot. It's supposed to be, that particular point that I'm measuring, supposed to be 265 volts. Now I do have the limiter on, it's at 135, so it's very, very low. I don't hear anything. The lamp is glowing a little bit, as you can probably tell. The lamp's effect is dropping the line voltage to 184 volts. There doesn't seem to be any shorts. Don't hear anything. Oh, I hear a crackle from the pot. See that? But I don't hear any radio noises. Nothing's blown up, which is a good thing. Maybe raise the voltage a little bit by reducing the limit. It's now gone up to 206 volts. So now I've got 100 watts in series with the load. The voltage here has gone up to 207. It's getting better. 205. Still no sound. Nothing at all. Bloody hell. Let me limit less. 218 volts. That's a 243. That's pretty close to what it's supposed to be. 265. What AC component have we got on there? 1.2 volts AC, so that filter cap is actually working. And no crackle anymore. So at this moment, I know this is not blowing up. I know that the switches have a problem. Well, do they? Switch off. They don't switch on. That one does. And once it's on, you can then switch the others in. But I get no sound out of there. Well, let's click back. So those switches obviously need some serious cleaning. And I do have 242 volts B+. And that's still got some restriction on there. Now, I'm not going to push my luck. I um, At least I know the B+, is there. I now need to do some voltage tests. See if the tubes are okay. There's one thing I do want to know. I'm going to put it on the pickup and I'm going to touch the back with the screwdriver, the pickup input, see if the power amp's working.
Nope. I should be hearing some noise right now, and I'm not. So, not much is working on here, except perhaps the power supply. That's not good. These switches could be seriously messed up. Okay, well, we're not getting much joy. Nothing is coming out of there. So it could be the output tube, could be the preamp tube. So the first thing to do is check for the voltages, make sure the supply is getting to where it should get, and then start from the end backwards. In other words, start with the power amp, preamp, and if those two can uh, start functioning, you start getting the pickup input working because the pickup really just goes through the preamp and power amp. And after that, then we go to the radio section. Right. Good place to stop for now. More to come. Thanks for watching. Actually, just another quick uh, bit of information. I switched it off, switched it on again with the pickup. And now look what happens when I touch that touching the pickup input. So the power amp is working. Brilliant. That means that I can actually put an audio signal in there. Well, we don't need to do that. We've got a lot of caps to change, but let's see what, uh, what happens when we play with the volume. Now it's gone. Something wrong with the volume control. There's definitely something wrong with the volume control. Let's try again. Now it's gone. Okay, something intermittent there. But I believe the power amp is working because we got that hum coming through when I touched the pickup input. Can't tell why it's not doing that now. All I did when I signed off is I switched it off and then did that again. It could be intermittent connect connections on the tube sockets, it could be all sorts of things, but at least I, th I believe the power amp is working. Great stuff. Okay, onwards.